Today we're going to talk about medical school histology basics, muscle. We will talk about various aspects of muscle, a little bit about the function of muscle, and the different types of muscle that facilitate the different functions of the body. We'll have some questions about muscle and just some features of muscle to be able to identify the different types and what characteristics of those types that facilitate their function. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about the different types of muscle. Now what's the function of muscle and what are some features? of muscle. Well, the function of muscle is to generate contractile force. That's the overall thing that it does. Locomotion of multicellular animals, the beating of hearts, and movement of internal organs depend upon muscles of different types. And we're going to talk about those types. Distinguishing features of them, muscle has a high concentration of contractile proteins, actin and myosin, and sometimes they're arranged diffusely, like in, in smooth muscle, and other times they're arranged in sarcomeres. Sarcomeres is a functional unit of uh, stratified. And all three types of muscle, cardiac, skeletal, as well as smooth muscle, all of those come from the mesoderm. So there are three different major types of muscle. You've got skeletal muscle, which is a large cell, and the nuclei are on the periphery, not in the center. It's voluntary. That's the one that we can control. It's large cell, multinucleated, and it has striations, as you can see, uh, see here. Also striated is cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is much smaller. Their branch and nucleus is in the center, but they do still have striations, and the functional unit is a sarcomere. Branch cell, nucleus in the center, usually one cell and one nucleus, but it could have. Smooth muscle cells are involuntary, we can't control them, and they have a single nucleus, and it's non striated. The action of myosin is align more diffusely in, in sarcom. So if we look at small smooth muscle, we see that these kind of like cigar-shaped cells, and there's a nucleus that is seen, the nucleus is inside the cell itself. So this is a muscle fiber or muscle cell. And if we look at that, we can see individual muscle cells. There's a nucleus of one, there's a nucleus for another one, and you can see the kind of pink cytoplasm. Here we can see cross-sections of them, the nucleus in the center, but you can see uh, the individual of muscle cells there, and it is non-striated, as you see there. If we look at, at the ureter, which has a lots of smooth muscle in it, we can see bundles of smooth muscle here and here and here and all around through there, and it's a little uh, more dark than is the connective tissue that you see here underneath the epithelium. It's a transitional epithelium since it's from the ureter, and then this is connective tissue below. There's also connective tissue on the outside. So we have fibroblasts, and then we have bundles of collagen that we see there, which is lighter stain than is the smooth muscle that we see here. Smooth muscle, you can see a smooth muscle bundle and individual cells there. If you have, look at a higher mag, you can see individ individual cells. Here's a drawing that we saw, and this is the actual cell. These are nuclei, so these are multiple cells. This is an individual cell you see there, and it's non striated If you look with tellurin and blue, this is a ductus deferens, so this is a pseudostratified columnar epithelium and the lumen, and through there, but all this is smooth muscle, and we can see individual muscle muscle fibers or, or cells. So you can see the nucleus in the center of these, but it's non-striated, as you can see. If we look at uh, rat intestine, we can see the mucosa there, which is epithelium, that plus lamina propria, the connective tissue, all the way to the muscularis mucosa. This muscularis mucosa and a muscularis externa. Both of those are muscle. If we look at those a little closer, move muscle of the muscularis mucosa and the muscularis externa, and we can even see myosis plexus that regulates the contraction of the uh, muscularis mucosa and our box plexus. These are nerve cells that regulate paracelsus, which is a contraction caused by the muscularis externa. And so if we look at that with uh, H&E, this is a muscle on the outside, the muscularis externa, and we look at this little box here. And so we can see cross sections of uh, individual smooth muscle cells, and you can see longitudinal views. You can see longitudinal views these of these muscle cells, individual muscle cells with the nucleus here no straight striations in these. If you stain it with uh, PAS, which uh, periodic acid shift, it stains for a high concentration of carbohydrates, you can see that the basement membrane of smooth muscle cells is PAS positive like you see in epithelium. And so we do just see the nuclei here, but you see the PAS staining around each one of these. If you look at a arteriole, 
uh, you can see smooth muscle cells. There's a lumen here, these endothelial cells. But we receive a uh, higher mag of smooth muscle cells. They have these little uh, apical cavioli on the surface that they have there. And you see a high density of fibers. And also you see these fusiform densities, these different densities. And the, the, the fibers are actually attaching to these densities to facilitate the contraction uh, of the muscle cell. There's a nucleus. And you can see the high density of actin and mycin. And another one, we can see a similar type thing, the densities that are attached to the, to the plasma membrane or inside the cell. And you can see the host of filaments. There are other organelles in through there. But there's a host of actin and mycin filaments in these. And there not arranged in a certain way in a sarcomere. And so it's called smooth muscle because it's a lack of the periodicity that you see in the striated muscle. Again, we can see some smooth muscle here and they're being innervated by the nervous system. And here we see the different parts of a nervous system, how they connect presynaptic, and postsynaptic, and a little bit of axon through there that would have the vesicles inside regulating the contraction of this smooth muscle. Another type of muscle is skeletal muscle, and here we see a muscle. This is an arm, a muscle. We can see a vascular muscle, which is groups of cells. And then we have individual muscle fiber or muscle cells. So this individual cell, you see it the same over here with nuclei on the periphery, nuclei located here, a big cell. And if you look inside there, you have myofibrils. Myofibrils are linear structures that are inside the muscle fiber. Muscle fiber here with a plasma membrane, nuclei on the periphery, and then we have inside the cell fibril. If you look at the mild fiber, you can see some dark area and some light areas, uh, and you can even see a darker structure there, which is a Z-disc here and here. And the sarcomere is from one Z-disc to another Z-disc, and you can see that this is myosin, and the actin, the smaller filaments, is actin. And so it's the location of these in relation to one another that makes the sarcomere contract as we'll see here in a minute. So if we look at skeletal muscle we can see the nuclei in the periphery and we see some capillaries in between there. Uh, and here we see connective tissue and this is the perimesium. The connective tissue that we see here is the perimesium here, skeletal muscle cells, capillaries in between. This is nerve that we see. Nerve is running through here, connective tissue of the perimesium. Now individual cells have connective tissue in there. We call it endomesium. Uh, in a minute we'll look at that. But remember what we see here is that muscle cells are innervated so uh, there can be more than one cell innervated by the same nerve and so that's what we see here in the muscle. These are the motor end plates where the nerve is coming down, innervating these muscle cells that we see there. One nerve innervates more than one muscle cell. So if we get back to our light and dark areas, we see the dark band, A band, and the A band is anisotrophic. In other words, it does alter polarized light. The A band, that's where it goes, A4, anisotrophic. Isotropic, I band, does not polarize, does not alter polarized light. And so it's the lighter band in between. And in between there, you have a Z disc. So for one Z disc to another Z disc is a sarcomere. And you can see that in contraction, what you have is is Z disc come closer together. For relaxation or stretching, uh, they're further apart. And so that's so so the sarcomeres are further apart in the case of stretch. In the case of contracted, they're close together. And so uh, if they totally overlap the actin, the actin overlaps the mycin, you have it contracted. If there's spaces that you have uh, either actin alone or mycin, which is the H band, that is the relaxed state. So we see that the dark is the A band and the I band is the light band. So if we look at, at muscle, uh, here is a piece of muscle on the outside of the muscle. We see the epimesium, epi outside, way outside connective tissue. But we see divisions inside there, that's the perimesium, perimesium that goes in through there. And then if you have around individual muscle cells would be the endomesium. So endomesium is around individual muscle cells that are inside there. So the perimesium is a coarse connective tissue. Uh, the uh, epimesium is coarse, less coarse with uh, the perimesium, but the endomesium is delicate connective tissue around individual cells. And this is where we saw capillaries in the endomesium. So this is a fascicle of muscle cells here and here, endomesium in between. So these are nuclei of muscle cells, muscle cells cells, connective tissue of the perimesium that we see, and indeed the nuclei on the periphery and its striated 
with light and dark bands and the A band being the dark band. If we look here in between these muscle cells and the endometrium, we can see capillaries. These are endothelial cells or capillaries. You can see the capillaries branching, branching as they go through there. But these are individual muscle cells and you can see in the endometrium, you see capillaries that are feeding these cells. If you look at another view of this, you can see the striations very nicely, nuclei on the periphery as you see there, cross section or two new section, and you can see the A and I band. And at a higher mag, you can see not only do you have the A band, the dark band, the light band is the I band, but you see the Z disc as well. So you can see the Z disc right in through there from one Z disc to another Z disc is one sarcomere, and you have repeating units of that along, along the muscle that track. One muscle cell is attached to another muscle cell by the endometrium is what attaches. And so we see electron microscopic view of skeletal muscle cell. Here's a nucleus on the periphery and you can see the sarcomere from Z line to Z, from Z disc to Z disc or Z line. One sarcomere, the H band is a lighter band where you do not have overlap between actin and myosin. The A band, the dark part here of the A band stays the same. It's the I band uh, that. And so here we can see in the esophagus, esophagus you have a combination of skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. You can see the smaller smooth muscle cells, the nuclei and the periphery of these uh, skeletal muscle cells, nerve, connective tissue in through there. We can see it there. This is skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. If you start in the beginning, the top of your esophagus, you have mostly skeletal muscle, but as you go toward the stomach, you have more smooth muscle so that it changes where you're located in the esophagus. This is muscle that is highly contracted. So you can see the Z disc here and here, and you can hardly see an I band at top. So when it's highly contracted, the, the, the I band uh, almost disappears, as you can see there. And certainly the H band in the middle has, has just dis disappeared. So you can see the hypercontracted of this muscle compared to the other one that we saw. So I mentioned the motor end plates where one uh, one nerve innervates more than one. Also there's a muscle spindle which are receptors, a stretch receptor, and it has a connective tissue capsule and then some of the fibers themselves are located. So these are muscle cell fibers that are inside there inside the capsule. So the motor end plates we saw before innervating the nerve, the skeletal muscle cell, but this is a muscle spindle and you can see this is a longitudinal view of it this is a cross-section of one but you can see these fibers if you see a higher mag of these you can see there's actually striation these intrafusal fibers that are inside the capsule the capsule is dense irregular connective tissue that goes that goes around it. If we look at the tongue, we can see another here. It's a muscle spindle here, and there's another muscle spindle here. And these are the endofusal fibers right here, and this is the end of one of those fibers, but that's what we see. And this is a, a stretch receptor in muscle. So here's skeletal muscle that we see with the light and dark bands that, that we see. And we saw that down here. You can see the disc from here and here. Also, the same thing, you have the striation in skeletal muscle uh, and a cardiac muscle too. But in addition, to having those striations, you have a bigger striation, and these are the intercalated discs. This is where one cell is attached to another cell, and you can see those intercalated uh, in here. Also, you might note that in cardiac muscle cells, the nucleus is in the center of the cell. It's not on the periphery as it is skeletal. So this is the intercalated disc at the electron microscopic level, as you can see, and then we, it is striated muscle, so we have an A band and an I band, uh, just like before, and the sarcomere is the C disc to another Z disc. And so if you look at intercalated disc, you can see them here, here, and here. And, and that's in addition to the A and I band uh, of, the, of the muscle. And you can see the nuclei in the periphery. So we can see one of these uh, nuclei in the periphery. That can see what we see there. These are cells of the, of the endometrium. These are fibroblasts of the endometrium. That's there, but we can see these intercalated discs. Now in this uh, specimen, uh, the cells have broken apart at the intercalated disc. And so we don't see the disc because the disc is broken, uh, but we can see that the cells are branched as you see here, and they're attached to more than more than one cell. So in this case, intercalated disc would be where here you can see a little bit of the darkness of the intercalated disc right there. Also, muscle accumulates lipofusin. So undigested parts of cell can accumulate in old muscle. So these are muscle cells in through here. This is yellow pigment that we see, golden pigment. is not Everything is yellow is not gold. This is lipofusin, uh, which is an aging pigment. So if you look at the heart, uh, you can see they have the SA 
node, a V node, and uh, then you have these fibers that go down here. This is a bundle of hist that comes down here, and these are Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers that causes uh, both ventricles to contract at the same time. Histologically, we can see these Purkinje fibers as very big, modified cardiac muscle cells in the connective tissue in between. So this would be in the paramecium that we hit in the mesium would be around individual cells. And you can see that these are big cells, much bigger than a typical cardiac muscle cell. They have a lot of glycogen and it's leached out during the processing. And that's what makes it lighter staining than the muscle cell. So if we look at intercalated disc, we saw it before here and here. And we see the, again, the, the sarcomeres from uh, Z line, Z line. We see the A and I band as we've talked about before also we see a transverse tube if we look at the next view you can see in the, in the intercalated disc there's gap junctions so the gap junctions don't hold the ends of the cell uh, the macular adherence and the fascial adherence is what holds the cells together this is one cell and another cell but it allows communication from one cell to another so it allows stimulation to come from one cell to another to stimulate contraction to regulate contraction uniform contraction of the cell so here we can see the gap junction right in through there and a gap junction and right through there and this is the intercalated disc so in addition to that another a contrast between cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle is that both of these have these transverse tubules transverse tubules is the enfolding of the plasma membrane so the plasma membrane enfolds deep uh, within the myofibrils here's a myofibril a myofibril mitochondria and the transverse tubule goes around through there and in the case of so you've got the transverse tubule and the sarcoplasmic reticulum this is a sarcoplasm reticulum we see here, which is really the endoplasm reticulum of the cell. In this case, skeletal muscle, the sarcoplasm reticulum follows the transverse tubule, and anywhere you cut it, you have cut through two parts of sarcoplasm reticulum, and one of a transverse tubule makes you make three things with the triad. Sarcoplasm reticulum, sarcoplasm reticulum, transverse tubule, triad. In contrast, the sarcoplasm reticulum does not lay against the transverse tubule in the skeletal and cardiac muscle, and only intermittently does it interact with it. And you can see, so when you cut it, you just have a dyad, just one transverse tubule and one sarcoplasm reticulum. Dyad versus triad that we can see. Also note that the transverse tubule is on the C disc, where in the case of transverse tubule over here is in the AI junction. See there is the A and this is the I and it's the AI junction is where you find it. So here we can see skeletal muscle. A transverse tubule is smaller in skeletal muscle than it is in cardiac muscle. Uh, and you have a dyad as we see here versus a, a dyad in the case of skeletal muscle. Triad, three components here in skeletal muscle. And you have the AI junction versus here the transverse Transverse tubule is on the Z disc. So a couple three questions that we had, which is or true about striated muscle. The A band, dark band, is anisotrophic to polarized light. True. The I band, light band, is isotrope polarized light. It does not alter polarized light, and hence its name I. A. True. The uh, endometrium is delicate connective tissue around individual myofibrils. False. It's individual myofibers or individual cells. You have endometrium, endo, the endometrium. Myofibrils are what's inside of a cell, not the cell. Which type of muscle have nuclei in the center and are involuntary? Smooth muscle have nuclei in the center and you're, they're not under control, so they're involuntary. Yes. Cardiac muscle, one or two nuclei in the center and they are involuntary. True. Skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle has multinucleated cells and they're voluntary. So the answer is D. Which is R related to stimulation of muscle contraction? Motor in place, of course. That's how the nerve tells the motor. The skeletal muscle in the mood. Gap junction, yes. Gap junctions you have in the cardiac muscle cell to allow contractions uh, to occur in synchrony because there are communication between uh, between adjacent cells. Pakenji fiber, yes. Pakenji fibers uh, go down uh, through the ventricle to allow both ventricles to contract at the same time. So in summary, muscle function is a uh, function in a contractile force. It's got to generate contractile force to move limbs, to move organs, to move uh, things within organs that is why we have the muscle contraction. Uh, and you have a, a high concentration of actin and mycin. Most all cells contract, contract, but certain cells especially contract, and then that is the muscle cell. In the case of striated muscle, that makes sarcomeres, or the, or the actin and mycin may be diffusely arranged as in the smooth muscle. So we use smooth muscle cell, individual cells here. We see skeletal muscle cells, cardiac muscle cells, the Purkinje fibers, and this is a transverse tubule on the C line 
behind this has got to be cardiac muscle. So here's another view of Big Bend National Park. Big mountain over there, and this is where Homestead was. So that's the end of medical, medical school histology basic. Thank you.